I was walking uh, along the, the road, it's kind of like a, like a motorway that goes past here. I didn't, uh, yesterday morning I didn't feel that I was close to the venue of a HM conference. And uh, I've never met uh, Kanishka before, uh, but we kind of saw each other and realised we were both on the way to the conference. We got chatting a bit, we found out we were both taking part uh, in this panel. And uh, it, it doesn't surprise me that I would meet someone I've never met before in a city I've never been to before. But who was taking part in a, who knew George and uh, took part in a, <laughs> <laughs> a, a, a panel's work. Uh, in fact, I, um, I was recently talking to uh, one of the editors of the Italian version of Vice magazine. Uh, <laughs> uh, a uh, woman not involved in the left, but who told me that she followed a Florence based Greek Marxist on his uh, erotic uh, good morning teenage Yanis Varoufakis and had a chance to interview uh, Yanis recently I, I was tempted to ask him directly about the origin of these uh, photos <laughs> um, I first met George uh, in Florence in uh, 2012 I believe um, of course that was uh, a moment when uh, Syriza had just um, uh, enjoyed its first big uh, electoral uh, breakthrough, and the Greek left uh, looked like something of an example for uh, Europe. Uh, indeed, in Italy, there was even an electoral list called uh, The Other Europe with Tsipras, uh, which strangely will not be making any reappearance in the 2019 uh, <laughs> European elections. Well, it's, it's zombies. <laughs> Um, and uh, as uh, Katerina mentioned, uh, so George mentions in the introduction that there's this uh, discussion. Uh, you, you, sorry, uh, George mentions like uh, there were these interviews with Syriza, but really now what they're useful for is a sort of historical record. Uh, it's hard to draw sort of strategic uh, insight uh, from them. Um, and um, I think it's interesting to, I mean, I'm not going to talk about sort of Syriza or what we can learn from it as such, but I think it's interesting to contextualize that experience and the international radical left's responses to it uh, within the, the sort of um, within sort of the current generation or within the, the past sort of 20 years of the, the radical left um, without doubt uh, even within this volume uh, there's a uh, sort of generational shift at play um, as uh, we move out of a sort of decades in which we were just suffering constant defeats uh, and in which um, there even as there is of course this rising reactionary wave, a lot of defeats of the sort of anti-fascism of the, the mid-20th century. Uh, at the same time, we see uh, new, um, new kinds of movements and new uh, left-wing formations. Uh, of course, if we think of uh, historical materialism's own uh, trajectory, uh, it emerged pretty much at the low point of anything that we call the radical left uh, in the mid-1990s. Uh, the first issue was published in... Uh, 1997, uh, given not only the, the sort of death or liberalisation of the old uh, communist parties, actually existing socialism and so on, but also the neoliberalisation neo of social democracy and the failure of anything new to emerge in their place at the sort of, uh, level of uh, high politics. Uh, of course, at the time historical materialism first came out, it was even before the, the alter globalisation uh, movement and so on. Um, and I think uh, it's interesting to look at the, uh, the sort of biographies of the, of the various figures uh, involved in, uh, in uh, this uh, volume, uh, because as uh, Kanishka mentioned, um, it's, a, it's a younger generation than, than Live on the Left, that the book mentioned earlier. Um, and um, the, when sort of George asked often as the first question, then what was your formative experience? Uh, in general, they're not sort of... Um, big collective moments of struggle or trauma, uh, often they're much more individual trajectories. I think the exception is Silvia Federici, because when you say, what's, what's your most formative experience? It's World War II. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but in general, of course, the, the great difference between the, 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 the two uh, volumes is that the, 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 the I think, uh, without exception, perhaps all of the figures in this volume uh, aren't sort of uh, children of or disappointed by the failures of the kind of 20th century official communist movement. Uh, that, that isn't uh, uh, really in, in um, question here. And of course what that also entails 
uh, particularly as, as, as few of the, those involved are even from the kind of 68 generation, um, there's very little uh, sense of kind of like thinking, well, we're about to see the sort of final victory of, of socialism. And of course that also has an implication for what uh, it is to be an intellectual on the left and the question of how we organise ourselves and who we're in dialogue uh, with. Um, it imposes uh, a, a profound work of rethinking the very bases of what we're doing and what the, the end goals are. Uh, that's not a matter of trashing history or throwing the baby out of the bathwater, uh, but certainly it's a, a question of, of going beyond hammering on about the old, same old tradition and hoping the objective circumstances will eventually come to us. Um, within the economy of this panel, I've been asked to talk about uh, political, the, the section on political developments on the left. Uh, but um, I mean, I, I'm pleased to represent in that sense uh, the future as opposed to history. <laughs> uh, but um, what we have with, uh, with the, the infuse with uh, particularly those with uh, Jeff Weber and Bhaskar Sankara, uh, they're very much um, figures who are sort of growing to political consciousness within th this moment within 2000 uh, and whose um, trajectory has, has therefore been conditioned by, by precisely that, the, the attempt to uh, sort of break out of the, the traditions of the last century, segment, uh, sorry, dogmatism and their own uh, sectarian uh, forums. Um, so I think we can say that this, this volume um, sort of tallies well with the, the, the project of historical materialism and for that reason it's no surprise that uh, the names of the, the contributors are indeed people who have contributed to our conferences and, and book series. Um, it could be hardly claimed that the role of Marxist intellectuals is, is simply to kind of like provide theory or direction that is then going to go <coughs> into a political strategy. Uh, but where I think the element of interview and the biographical uh, aspect of, of, of the interviews in the book uh, also helps to show it is, is it's kind of like, well, why are we doing all of this? You know, why are we here talking about this stuff? Uh, and it's obviously born of um, political investment and uh, the desire to uh, change the world. Um, it's difficult, in a way, to, to directly connect our, our research or uh, uh, conferences like this to sort of political activity uh, in the sense that um, you know, I mean, often when I see uh, you know, young people, so I hate to say who are younger than me, sort of involved in the, uh, the Labour Party or DSA, and I kind of think about what we've been doing for the last 10 years, even experiences like Syriza, I kind of ask, like, well, what have we actually learned? Uh, you know, what do we have to, to say? Um, but I think in, in that sense it's uh, very interesting, the, the epilogue by... Um, uh, Eugenia Tiakara on, on, the, on the role of left intellectuals and the role of, um, sort of conveying uh, uh, historical understanding and being able to look beyond the immediate tasks of the present. Uh, she puts it, uh, criticism has to both transcend the current circumstance and provide a critique uh, from within it. Um, so in that sense I think we say that the specific place of Marxist theory of our publishing activity of conferences like this isn't just to provide some sort of lessons or, or time and traditions from the past, but rather to create a community of ideas, the kind of exchanges that can transcend our own particular experiences. And, and this book, uh, in drawing on uh, figures from diverse traditions, but also I think you could say many of the speakers also represent the, sort of many of the, uh, the interviews here, represent the transcendence of their own traditions. Uh, I think that that's exactly the kind of cultural project which uh, historical materialism is. Uh, oriented towards, and therefore it's no surprise that uh, George himself, of course, has played such a role in uh, organising uh, this conference this weekend. Um, I've heard it said that, uh, you know, in uh, reading a, often sort of, uh, kind of commission, commissioning interviews with recent books for, for Jacobin, which I work for, uh, there's a bit of the problem that, you know, it's like if you've read the uh, interview, then you don't really need to read the book itself. Uh, so in this case, I, I would prefer not to uh, explain in detail the actual content of the uh, interviews, uh, because then you'll deprive George of the 15 euros he so richly deserves. <laughs> <laughs>